The posterior cerebral artery is one of a pair of blood vessels that supply oxygenated blood to the posterior aspect of the brain in human anatomy. It arises near the intersection of the posterior communicating artery and the basilar artery and connects with the ipsilateral middle cerebral artery and internal carotid artery via the posterior communicating artery. Origin The development of the PCA in fetal brain comes relatively late and arises from the fusion of several embryonic vessels near the caudal end of the P, supplying the mesencephalon and deencephalon of the fetus. The PCA begins as such as a continuation of the P, in the fetus with only 10 to 30 percent of fetuses having a prominent basilar origin. The fetal carotid origin of the PCA usually regresses as the vertebral and basilar arteries develop with the PCOMA reducing his size. In most adults, the PCA sources from the anterior portion of the basilar artery. Only about 19% of adults retain PCOMA dominance of the PCA with 72% having dominant basilar origin, and the rest having either equal prominence between PCOMA and basilar artery or a single exclusive source structure the branches of the posterior cerebral artery are divided into two sets ganglionic and cortical central branches also known as the perforating branches thalamoperforating and thalamogeniculator posteromedial ganglionic branches a group of small arteries which arise at the commencement of the posterior cerebral artery these with similar branches from the posterior communicating pierce the posterior perforated substance and supply the medial surfaces of the thalami and the walls of the third ventricle peduncular perforating a posterolateral ganglionic branches small arteries which arise from the posterior cerebral artery after it has turned around the cerebral peduncle they supply a considerable portion of the thalamus Choroidal branch is not to be confused with the anterior choroidal artery medial posterior choroidal branches. Run forward beneath the splenium of the corpus callosum and supply the telechoroidea of the third ventricle and the choroid plexus. Lateral posterior choroidal branches. Small branches to the cerebral peduncle, fornix, thalamus, chordate nucleus and choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle. Dot. Cortical branches. The cortical branches are anterior temporal, distributed to the uncus and the anterior part of the fusiform gyrus, posterior temporal to the fusiform and the inferior temporal gyri, lateral occipital, which branches into the anterior, middle and posterior inferior temporal arteries. Medial occipital, which branches into the calcarine, to the cuneus and gyrus lingualis and the back part of the convex surface of the occipital lobe. Parieto occipital, to the cuneus and the precuneus. Splenial, or the posterior periclosal branch, sometimes anastamos is with the anterior cerebral artery, and may not be present if the echo wraps around the corpus callosum. Clinical relevance, stroke, contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensations, visual field defects, prosopic nausea with bilateral obstruction of the lingual and fusiform gyri, superior alternating syndrome, ipsilateral deficits of oculomotor nerve, contralateral deficits of facial nerve, vagus nerve and hypoglossal nerve. Horner's syndrome, signs and symptoms, structures involved, see, posterior cerebral artery syndrome, peripheral territory, homonymous hemonopia, calcarine cortex or optic radiation nearby, bilateral homonymous hemonopia, cortical blindness, awareness, a denial of blindness, tactile naming, achromatopia, failure to see to and fro movements, inability to perceive objects not centrally located, apraxia of ocular movements, inability to count or enumerate objects, tendency to run into things that the patient sees and tries to avoid, bilateral occipital lobe with possibly the parietal lobe involved.
verbal dyslexia without agraphia, color anomia, dominant calcarean lesion and posterior part of corpus callosum. Memory defect hippocampal lesion bilaterally or on the dominant side only, topographic disorientation and prosopagnosia usually with lesions of non-dominant calcarine and lingual gyrus, simultanagnosia, hemivisual neglect, dominant visual cortex, contralateral hemisphere, unformed visual hallucinations, peduncular hallucinosis, metamorphopsia, teleopsia, illusory visual visual spread, palinopsia, distortion of outlines, central photophobia, calcarine cortex, complex hallucinations, usually non-dominant hemisphere, central territory thalamic syndrome, sensory lost spontaneous pain and dysesthesias, choreothetosis, intention tremor, spasms of hand, mild hemiparesis, contralateral hemanesthesia, posteroventral nucleus of thalamus, involvement of the adjacent subthalamus body or its saffron tracts. Thalamoperforate syndrome, cross cerebellar ataxia with ipsilateral third nerve palsy, dentothalamic tract and issuing third nerve. Weber syndrome, third nerve palsy and contralateral hemiplegia, third nerve and cerebral peduncle. Contralateral hemiplegia, cerebral peduncle, paralysis, aparesis of vertical eye movement, skew deviation, sluggish pupillary responses to light, slight meiosis and ptosis, supranuclear fibers to third nerve, interstitial nucleus of cardial, nucleus of dark switch, and posterior commissure, contralateral rhythmic, ataxic action tremor, rhythmic postural or holding tremor, dent tothalamic tract.